How on earth did the Soviet Union build a working lunar lander and never send it to the moon? While the world remembers Apollo and the American flag on the moon, few know that the USSR had its own lunar lander, the LK, or Lunny Corrible. It was compact, elegant, and designed for a one-man lunar mission. Unlike NASA's lunar module, the LK was lighter, simpler, and built for a solo cosmonaut. By the late 1960s, the LK had gone through successful uncrewed test flights in Earth orbit. It passed its systems checks. It worked. Cosmonauts were training. The USSR was preparing for a secret moon landing. But it never happened. Why? The answer lies in the rocket that was supposed to carry it there, the N-1. The N-1 was the Soviet answer to NASA's Saturn V. Massive, powerful, and completely unreliable. It failed four times, each one a catastrophic explosion. With no heavy lift rocket capable of sending the LK to lunar orbit, the mission was grounded. The LK never had a chance to fly to the moon. Meanwhile, Apollo 11 succeeded in July 1969. The moon race was over. Public and political interest in a Soviet landing faded. Internally, tensions grew. Budgets were cut. The Soviet space program quietly shelved the LK, and history moved on. But here's what could have been. The LK would have launched with a single cosmonaut aboard. Once in lunar orbit, the LK would detach and descend to the moon's surface. After planting a Soviet flag and collecting samples, the cosmonaut would return to orbit and dock with the mother craft, just like Apollo, only it would have been done alone a solo moonwalk, a lone cosmonaut standing where Gagarin once blazed the trail in space. Instead, the LK sits today in museums and photos, untouched by lunar dust. It worked, it flew. But without a ride, it became one of the greatest almost moments in space history. If this hidden chapter of the moon race amazed you, like the video and subscribe for more How on Earth stories from the edge of history and space.